Hello, guys. How you doing? My name is Victor. My name is Andrea. And we are here with our beautiful mom. Miss Christine. Having a mom is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful experience to wake up every day and share the day with our mom. She's a prayer warrior. She's an advisor, a counselor. She's everything to me and to us. So we're very grateful to still have her. So we want to share a testimony on how God healed our mom. She complained of not feeling well for a couple of weeks, especially um, headaches, blurry visions, and it continued until the 23rd of April, which is Sunday. Right, Mom? Yes. Doing service, um, I've, I've continued having the same headache, weakness. I had to sit down because I feel very weak. It was cold that day. Then my hair was really hit there. Yeah, so it continued that way. And after service, when I came to meet her, Looking at her, I could tell she wasn't well. So then one day morning, right before I was leaving for work, uh, my little brother called me in and told me that mom is calling you. Um, so when I went in her room, I saw her on the floor um, shaking as if she was cold. And uh, right away, you know, I just began to pray for her. I laid my hands on her. I gave the communion. And I realized that, okay, let me at least inform my sister of what's going on and have her come in as well too, just to be with her. She told me that around 5.30 that morning, she got up to join the prayer. Um, and in the midst of prayer, she was a bit tired, so she dozed off a little bit. And then when she dozed off, she sensed that she was hit. So she basically received a blow right in the middle of her head. So that's when the headache um, intensified. So I said, okay, you're well. Victor has prayed for you. He's giving you communion and I let her her rest and I remember what Pastor Steve Fah told us that Sunday, previous Sunday about us being miracle carriers and not miracles chasers so I laid hands on her once again so I prayed and I told her mom don't lay here and accept what the enemy is doing make sure you're confessing and you're praying and you're rejecting everything that they're doing and the enemy started attacking my mind because it was like oh so now you think you're Pastor Steve where you can lay hands on people and pray. I said, well, I'm not Pastor Steve, well, I am his daughter. When the enemy talks, you don't keep silent. So I was speaking with one of my sisters in the Lord who's in the medical field. And her recommendation was don't take her to the ER if she has a doctor, get in touch with her doctor, which is what I did. So the doctor wanted me to bring her in. So Wednesday, we got ready, got to the doctor's office. And we got there within 30, 45 minutes. Mom was being rushed from the doctor's office by ambulance to the ER. I was like, okay, Lord, I know you're in control. I called Victor and I called one of my sisters and we were talking. So I started talking. Victor was like, yeah, I remember the message I sent you earlier this morning, which was telling me. Yeah, so when she called me, uh, one of the things I told her was, Remember the text that I sent to you in the middle of the night? I believe it was like around 2 or 3 in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, while I was praying the prayer chain, my mind drifted towards my mom. At that moment, there's an urge that came over me, and I took my phone out, and I texted my sister, and I was like, tell mom that she can forget about dying. You know, I, I don't know why, but that urge came over me, and I texted her. So when she called me and was telling me that they were rushing to the ER, it was peace. I wasn't worrying anything because... I knew they were really prayer ahead of time and the law was working. Yeah, it took me back to uh, uh, a thought that crossed my mind earlier where I was thinking that, Lord, um, I thank you for healing our mom. She's well. And I could envision, like Pastor Nick has always told us, you know, the Bible says that with long life, the Lord, the Lord will satisfy us. So I could envision us celebrating her 90th birthday with her children, her grandchildren. We got to the ER and the daughter, my mom, on IV. So at that moment, I called my siblings and I told them, okay, this is what's going on. We are being kept. And at that moment, he encouraged me. He prayed with me and then he said, mama is well. And I was like, I believe it because we've also been praying. So they ran some tests, they drew a lot of blood ran tests. Friday morning, the doctor comes in and she goes, we're not finding anything. But we wanted to do a spinal tap. And I asked her, what is that? So basically it was because mom was complaining so much of her head hurting, then her chest was hurting, and the x-rays weren't showing anything. They wanted to go in her spine and draw some of the fluid to test it out to see what it would give because, again, the headaches just were not subsiding. I kept reminding her, 
when they come and say these things, let's not accept it, let's stand against it. So Friday, the doctor came in that was supposed to do the procedure. So I sat up and she was explaining everything. Oh, she cannot move. It's her spine. So at that moment, fear started creeping in. Um, so the doctor goes in with the needle. Um, she's driving the fluid from her spine. I looked at my mom and I could see that she was also praying. So I was smiling. And the moment she drew the, f uh, the first fluid out, she goes, she looks at me and asks, has the previous doctor mentioned anything about blood um, bleeding on the brain? And I say, no, when they did the scan, they mentioned a few spots that they have, you know, that they caught on the imaging, but nothing, everything came back negative. So I asked her, why do you ask about bleeding in the brain? She goes, well, the fluid that I'm showing is a little pink in color. It shouldn't be that way. So it, it's a cause for concern. Then again, the thoughts, the uh, attacks on the mind started, but we still stood in prayer. Saturday morning, um, I remember calling Pastor, and I was, I sent him a test, matter of fact. And I was like, Pastor, I want to give you a heads up of what's going on since Monday. I was sending my mom. And when I sent the message, literally within like two minutes later, the Pastor called me. And I explained to him a little bit more uh, for about what's happening. His first thing to me was, Victor, it is not your mom's word to be sick. Right? God has purchased a human. Um, I said, yes, sir. I, I believe the word. He said, okay. He said, agree with me that your mom will come out the hospital, that she will be me well and receive a human. He asked me, so are you going to see your mom? I said, yes, I'm going now. Yeah, so Sunday, so we drove to the hospital to see mom. Honestly, she looked well, she looked it fine. But again, they will not release her to come home. Doctors um, came in. And I, you know, we spoke with them and I asked the doctor, so what exactly is she being treated for? And the doctor looked at me and said, honestly, she's a mystery. And at that moment, I laughed because I knew what she did not know. She said she's a mystery because we're not finding anything on any of the tests. So then the doctor asked me, do you want to come pick her up today? or tomorrow, Wednesday. I said we can do Wednesday morning. They left there safe and sound, and I just want to thank God for the healing of my mom. So we really like to thank Pastor Steve and Pastor Neka for equipping us on what to do when we face this situation um, and not doing life alone. Because having our brethren and the Lord standing with us in prayer was very beautiful. So we thank God for his miracles and the healings, but we also thank our pastors for everything that they do. God bless you.